Do pilots have a silly way of when acknowledging each other? Wow, I cannot read already. We are off to a fantastic start. Do pilots have a silly way of acknowledging each other? <sighs> me, 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 me. Do pilots have a silly way of acknowledging each other when they pass relatively close by another plane? I really, really hope not. I really do, okay? Like, because if they're close enough to have a silly acknowledgement for each other, they are too close. They are way too close. They're probably going to hit each other. Do y'all realize how far apart planes have to pass before they can, like, see each other? Like, when you're up there in the sky, you know what I'm saying? Even when you're, like, taking off. If you've ever been in a plane, you look out your window, you see other planes. There ain't no way you are seeing a person's features or seeing what they're doing inside of that cockpit or inside of another plane. There is no way. And if you are close enough, hey, bikers, like that. I was literally just about to bring up bikers. I literally could not make this up. This was not planned. I did not pay them off. Um, <laughs> I was literally about to say, as a biker, we have waves. You know, stick out your hands, you wave at each other as you ride by. You know, you acknowledge each other's existence. It's because it's safe. If you are in two planes passing by each other like this or like this, you guys should not be close enough to see each other wave at each other. I don't care what the acknowledgement is. You guys shouldn't be. It's that simple. Please don't. This is why I don't want to get on planes in case stuff like this actually happens. Anyways, welcome back everybody yet again to the Ninja Guy YouTube channel. That was kind of a chaotic start to a video. Um, But we're back on r slash no stupid questions, my favorite subreddit to get questions like this. As per usual, we're going to start up the video by starting her up oh man she sounds beautiful as ever anyways like i said welcome back everybody uh today we're going to be going through r slash no stupid questions i think this is my third video on this subreddit i really like this subreddit uh i'm definitely gonna be mixing it up at times because i don't want to just fall into a habit of using the same subreddit for subreddit for everything but the questions that i find on here are absolutely the best ones that i have found um so as always leave a like a comment if you would please consider subscribing to the channel that is the best way to support me i'd like to say thank you again for all the support on the recent videos you guys have been killing it um and uh yeah no further ado let's go ahead and jump into the second topic after i get around this corner because i don't want to be reading while trying to take a corner like this Woo! okay Parents of twins, are you sure both kids have always kept their original names? Okay, I am not a, a parent of twins, so I have no input on this, but the reason I screenshotted this is because the first comment, which was the only comment at the time that I screenshotted it because it was fairly new when I found it, um, is absolutely the best comment, one of the best comments I think I've ever seen. Yes, 100%. I have twin boys, William and Adam. William and Adam. And the day they were born, we had one tattooed Adam and the other one tattooed not Adam because we hadn't made a final decision on his name yet. That is hilarious. First off, this is probably not true. Actually, disclaimer, YouTube, this is not true. I hope not. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, no, this is probably not true. But if it was, say it was, okay? The kid that's Adam, it's not... I mean, it's kind of weird to have your name tattooed on you, but like at the same time, I can see it for the parents. Put it in a place that isn't like super obvious, but like, I don't know. I, that's, that seems actually, you know, we're not getting into the topic. That seems weird. Um, at the same time, though, um, uh, the person, William, poor William, got tattooed not Adam on him. So like he just has it tattooed on him forever that he was the unexpected one. Like, 100%. When the two babies were born, they were instantly like, yep, nope, that one's Adam. That one, uh, we're going to have to kind of figure out. He's just kind of here. Like, that poor child. Obviously, this isn't real, but, like, can you imagine the trauma that that would put somebody through? But at the same time, it would be really funny to have not Adam tattooed on you. Like, say that, like, you know, you got in a car accident and you died, which, like, would suck. You know, I'm not saying it's a good thing. But then the police are like, huh, like, there's no identification. It's like, well, I can tell you one thing. He sure ain't no Adam. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, just the, the thought of having not Adam tattooed on you, if your name is not Adam, is such a funny topic. Like, I you would have to, like, I would, I kind of want to do it now, which I'm not going to, but I think it'd be really funny. Just like big, bold letters on my arm, just like, you know, not green. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> because I'm blue. It'd be funny. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, I thought, I just, I saw that and I was like, wait, what? And then I read the comment. And I was like, oh yeah, that's hilarious. Why do people, myself included, like blue cheese? Because it has my name involved. Obviously. Duh. And you guys know how it is. I screenshotted this one just because it had the word blue in it. I personally, uh, this might sound really weird. I don't think I've ever had blue cheese. 
Uh, I know, like, that's like a hot topic for people is like whether you like or don't like blue cheese, but I've never actually had blue cheese that I can remember. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think I remember ever having blue cheese. I might have before, but I don't really, it wasn't memorable enough for me to actually like care about the experience, uh, if I ever did. So, but I don't, I don't have an input on this, but like you should like blue cheese because it's my cheese, obviously. Uh, go support me, buy some blue cheese. Uh, 5% of all blue cheese sales, uh, come to me. Um, uh, also use my code blue at bluecheese.com for, uh, 5%. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's a little funny. It's, it's just a little funny. Just a little funny. Also, why are we going so slow, people? I got places to be. Somewhere to be. Uh, if y'all watched my last video, you obviously know I'm kind of in a hurry today because I'm uh, m uh, bulk recording two videos back to back because I'm about to go on a trip for my birthday. And I have somewhere to be today, so I got to go and get all my recordings and stuff done today with enough time to go home and get all my vi uh, files exported so I can edit them tonight when I get back or at a day before I leave my trip. Uh, anyways, unimportant information. Unrelated. What is all of those machines? Is that all woodcutter stuff? Yeah, I don't know. What happened to the movies? Um, I, I don't know. They're, they go into a lot of uh, detail here, and it says something about movie theaters and other things like that. Um, uh, but that's not, uh, like, it just kind of sparked into me something that I want to talk about, um, about movies, personally. First off, everything is either a sequel or a remake right now, uh, which I know the entire internet is complaining about it, with, you know, good reason, you know, or they're making a movie about a video game, <coughs> Minecraft, uh, and they all look terrible, or they all go bad like they're using prior media that they know that did well um and it's stupid it's so stupid there's no original ideas out there movie theaters are also i think movie theaters are coming back um like if you look at deadpool 3 or deadpool and wolverine you know to be more specific that movie what is it now it's like it's the number one grossing r-rated movie of all time and it was movie theater sales like Obviously, movie theaters are coming back. They took a big hit because of the pandemic, and it's been slowly coming back. Uh, th that makes sense. But on top of that, I, I heard this thing the other day, and I'm not 100% sure if it's true. There are movie stars talking about it. Uh, so, like, there's probably some merit to it. And I don't have all the details, but, it like, it's something that just made sense, and I'm just kind of curious how you guys feel about this. Because, uh, personally, I think it's ridiculous. Um, but, anyways industries and companies are refusing to make new ideas into movies or like make new ideas because of failure like because they're not if it doesn't make enough money at the movie theaters then they stop making money on it entirely which i kind of find to be a ridiculous topic or a, like kind of stupid i don't understand how that works with the way that subscription services are and everything and like with people renting movies all the time on YouTube and other stuff like that, which obviously I understand that doesn't make as much, but they say it's because the movies used to make up all their revenue back on DVD sales, and now people don't sell DVDs anymore, which they obviously do, but people aren't buying enough DVDs anymore to make it up. So that's why people used to make a bunch of original idea movies, and if they bombed, they'd just make it back in DVD sales over the years, like, and it wasn't that big a deal. But now, like, if they don't make their money back in the box office, it's not good. So instead of actually making good movies, they're just making movies that you know have big names or they know are gonna draw a certain crowd because it drew a crowd previously and even if the movies trash it'll make a certain amount in box office so like they'll be fine so they can't take a big gamble and I think that kind of sucks I really do I think right now if somebody came up with an original concept an original idea for a movie that actually like looked good and interesting I have a feeling that it would do amazing because of how sick and tired we all are of remakes and series or like, uh, you know, uh, like making Toy Story 7 or whatever the hell they're going to make now. Which don't be wrong, I like the Toy Story movies, but like those could have ended a long time ago. But like, what do you guys think? Like, do you guys like all the remakes? Do you like all the remasters? Do you like the continuings of movie series that should have died forever ago? Or do you wish they would just take the gamble and make original content and like, will try and enjoy it anyways if they actually put creativity into it. I mean, I wish they would just make some good original things, you know. That's, y'all probably hearing me like a broken record, but at the same time, I wanted to bring it up because, like, th does it make sense? Like, have you guys heard of this? Like, the thing where they're not making it because of, like, DVD sales or whatever the heck it was, like, you know, or, like, merch or other things like that? Like, I'm just curious. Like, because I have obviously don't, haven't done my own research. I don't do my own research on anything. Uh, I think it, uh, you know, I mean, I do sometimes, but like, I like to just talk about things that aren't important, but I was just curious because I've been seeing a lot of things about it and the Minecraft movie looks terrible. Uh, so yeah, there's that. What would happen if an international English speaker went on a spelling bee 
in Paris, but the judge is American, and they spelt the word color with a U, as in C-O-L-O-U-R. First off, I want to know what kind of drugs you're taking uh, for a friend. Um, <laughs> I want to know what kind of, I want to know, I want to know what you're on. I want to know what you're on. I want to know why your brain works the way that it does, because this is a very interesting topic. Second off, I think there's more than one judge in a spelling bee, right? There is more than one judge in a spelling bee, I'm pretty sure. Like, there, there's no way that you can go to a spelling bee and there just be one judge. Also, um, I'm pretty sure a lot of things like this have regulations, as in, like, words you should know, or dictionaries that they can pull from. Like, and you have a pre-list of what all those words look like and are spelled like. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that would make sense. Not 100% sure, but I feel like that would make sense. Um, uh, but at the same time, what is an American doing in Paris judging a spelling bee, spelling bee for foreigners? What, why do Americans just feel the need to insert themselves into every other culture when it's not necessary? Also, do other cultures have spelling bees? That's another thing. Does every culture have spelling bees? Uh, like, or is it just like... Because actually it wouldn't make sense because a lot of places don't have spelling or they just do symbols which I guess ours is just a bunch of symbols put together too but like like I don't know how to read Japanese but if you look at that like could you have a spelling bee for Japanese do you know what I'm saying because like dude I don't know oh my gosh I'm so confused now I have to know Okay, I know I just said a minute ago I'm not going to do research. I don't do research, but I might have to research this. Um, that's an interesting topic. Anyways, if I had to read that topic and it twists my brain like this, uh, I'd have to do the same for you guys. So I'm curious what you guys think would happen in that spelling bee. Also, uh, to actually answer the question, uh, I think that they would get it correct if they spelled it in the way that was provided beforehand. Like, if they spelled it with a C-O-L-O-U-R, if that's even how that's spelled in that language, I have no clue. Um, then I would imagine that it's correct. You know, I would imagine they would have to give it to him. Uh, also, that doesn't seem like a word that would be in a spelling bee, though. Why does too much chili kill you if it's just a chemical that makes the illusion of heat? First off, I need somebody to fact check me. Actually, I tell you back, this video needs a lot more research than it had. Um, uh, I need somebody to fact check this. Can too much chili actually kill you? I don't know. I don't eat chili. I don't eat a lot of spicy foods really in general either, but I don't eat chili. Chili makes me sick. So I don't I don't eat chili. So I don't I don't know if too much of it can kill you. Obviously I'm still alive, so I know. Jack Skellington and I'm back for Christmas, a lot of decorations. Um uh, sorry, ADHD. Um uh well allegedly. Um anyways. <laughs> I very much apologize. I'm on one. This is why I don't do my recordings this early in the morning. Um, uh, uh, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, I obviously haven't died to eating chili, but like, I want to know if it can kill you. Also, since when does chili just have a chemical that makes the illusion of heat? Like, what kind of like, your brain can overcome any type of pain BS is this? There's a word for that. It starts with a P. Penundrum. Or I, like a thing where it's like, you know, if you think that it's not real, it's not real or whatever type like that. Like, um, and also if it can kill you just by the illusion of heat, okay? I think the illusion of heat kind of doesn't matter because if it is technically only creating an illusion of heat, right? Your body is having the reaction to it like it's hot. And if you have too much of it, then your body can overreact. And I'm imagining your temperature can rise and you can have a fatal fever. It like, you know, like if we're going to talk like it actually can do that. Like I'm, I'm doing this hypothetically if this is a real thing. Okay. So say it is an illusion of heat and say you're not actually hot. Like it's not actually hot. Your body doesn't know that. The, it's creating the illusion that it's heat. You can't tell your body to stop having its natural reaction to heat. And it's going to continue to freak out the more you give it to it, no matter how much you're like, hey, down there, stop being a little bitch boy about this. It's not actually heat. It's just the illusion of it. It doesn't matter. You're not going to die because it's hot. It's not literally ingesting an actual flame like the Elementals movie. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like... So I don't understand what this whole illusion of it has to do with anything. If your body is still... You, every time you eat chili, 
you you have a reaction like it's hot i know there's going to be some of you like i don't think chili's hot i don't care what you think you guys you, you know you have your own opinions and tolerances to everything else whatever your body it's still doing what it's doing to your body so i don't understand what the illusion of it has to matter like you can't just teach your body hey this isn't real you know what i'm saying and if you can power to you like you know that's some you know winter soldier type stuff uh but like your body's still gonna react to it do you know what i'm saying like i don't under i i don't the thought process isn't there for me but i just want to know if chili can actually kill you if you eat too much of it which granted i know if you eat too much of anything anything can kill you you can overdose on water for peace sake but at the same time like I don't think it's necessarily the the illusion of the hotness and the chili that would kill you. Unless it is. I could be wrong. I might have figured it out myself by saying that it makes your body overreact like it's hot and you have to have a fever. But that also just doesn't sound real. So, like, you know, I don't know. I'm also just talking out of my ass, like always. Aw. That was either that was a dead squirrel. It looked like. Poor buddy. I like squirrels. How come torn hole based jeans became a fashion? Uh, first off, you know. They look cool. At least I think so. If you guys don't think it looks cool, that's your own opinion. We're all entitled to our own opinion. Uh, but the thing I want to talk about it was, is the like their description, their further description for it, which don't remember, a lot of times I don't read the further descriptions on people with Reddit posts. I also don't pick a lot of them that have a lot of further description because I don't, I don't want to sit out here on my motorcycle and just read 10 pages of paragraphs. Um, but a lot of times I just skip it because I just like to interpret questions the way that I want to for interesting topics for myself personally just to have things to talk about but earlier it was a sign of poverty but now it uh uh ratio what the fuck Rad okay sorry my my phone screen has uh like my screensaver has scratches and bubbles all in it uh from multiple issues that i've had with it uh and it says uh rather it became a full-fledged uh fashion statement first off um i don't think ripped jeans have been a sign of poverty for like over a hundred years like <laughs> i mean i could be wrong but like i mean okay yeah i mean if we're thinking like 1920s people walking around with ripped jeans like yeah they were all dressed fancy okay so like let's say like 50s 60s okay like 60 70 80 years ago i don't think ripped jeans were just a sign of poverty people have been wearing ripped jeans for like a long time it feels like long enough time to where it feels like everyone in our current lifetime understands that ripped jeans are a style so that makes me want to know who's writing this on reddit all of that comes down to how old is this person on reddit right now like is some 95 year old coming on reddit to rant about these these young whippersnappers and their ripped jeans and yada 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 and their smart techie phones like seriously who who's writing about this first off like this this has to be an older than a boomer that that wrote this which is strange to me also i think fashion has evolved so much now and devolved at the same time but to where like anything can be a fashion statement depending on how you choose to wear it or what you wear it with like don't get me wrong obviously ripped jeans like are a fashion statement now i have a lot of ripped jeans i just think they look cool i personally like to wear pants that look cooler than my tops uh a lot of you haven't been able to tell from my like outfit style like i like to wear plain shirts with extremely wild painted all over on jeans sometimes like i just think it looks cool to have cool pants rather than just plain old blue jeans but that's just personal opinion if you don't want to own a single pair of ripped jeans because you think it makes you look like you're in poverty that's fine but i'll tell you one thing you're not in poverty for having ripped jeans ripped jeans are more expensive than normal jeans a lot of times and i'm not trying to say that to flex because like a lot of people have ripped jeans i'm not saying i like i'm not trying to say that i'm rich I get cheap ripped jeans off Sheen. But I'm saying, like, if you want to get some, like, designer ripped jeans, designer ripped jeans, like, that shit's not cheap. Like, it's not a sign of poverty, like, anymore. So, like, again, and I think that's been that way for a while. So, how old is the person writing this comment? But what do you guys think? Do you guys like ripped jeans? I obviously like ripped jeans. If you don't like them, that's cool. We're all entitled to our own opinions. Uh, your opinion can be wrong if it differs from mine, but we're all entitled to our own opinions. Uh, <laughs> And I think we're all also allowed to have our own styles. I don't see anything wrong with people wearing ripped jeans or not wearing ripped jeans. Like, I think it's, I think, like I said, anything now can be a fashion statement. I don't think that we have, like, 
I mean, obviously there are negative fads, but I think we're in an era where like everybody can just kind of do anything and still make it look cool. Like we got people like dressing from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s. We got super futuristic type stuff. We got modern stuff. You know, like there's just tons of styles that are cool and will continue to be. So it's like, you know, I don't think you know obviously fashion statements are still a thing but i think they're less of a thing now and i think everyone can just openly have their own fashion statement and it's less trendy but i don't know i also could be wrong is it possible to build muscle without eating eggs uh, i think so i'm like i'm pretty sure i don't think eating eggs directly correlates with building muscle i'm pretty sure if you hit the gym every single day and eat protein but don't eat a single egg you're still going to gain muscle um like i i don't I'm kind of curious what this person's thought process is. And you know what I think this this person's thought process is, which this is why I screenshot this. I think internet uh, gym influencers are getting to people too much. I really do. Like, I am not a fitness influencer. I'm not a fitness expert. I'm not a health expert. I'm not anything. But there's one thing that I can confidently say that exercise helps. Working out helps. If you exercise, you will be healthier. Um, if you work out, you will be healthier. However, that also comes with diet. You cannot do that without eating food. And 90% of the time, it doesn't matter about what food you're eating. Yes, it does matter about what food you're eating, but the main thing is calories and the way you're eating it. Calorie deficits, eating a ton of extra calories. You can get protein in a million different ways. You can have a diet that doesn't in, in, involve any like actual uh, well, I guess you can't have it that doesn't involve protein, but I'm saying you can have it that involves different proteins. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can have a diet that revolt a carnivore diet that's purely around eating meat. You can have a vegetarian diet and you can work out and still gain muscle. Like, it literally, it doesn't matter whether you eat eggs or not. Like, just because you see the Dwayne The Rock Johnson or, you know, uh, whatever the dude from Beauty and the Beast is. I forget his name because he's a piece of shit. Gandalf. I know his name's not Gandalf, but, um, Gaston! Gaston! Just as you see him eat six dozen eggs every morning, like he says in that song or whatever it is, that didn't give him muscles. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, yes, it helps. Eggs is a good way to get stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? I think eggs is protein and stuff, right? If I'm completely wrong on this, I'd kind of feel bad, but at the same time, I really wouldn't. Uh, but like, you could definitely gain muscle uh, without eating eggs. That's the main thing. But like, don't let fitness influencers influence you. You know what I'm saying? If you really want to get into fitness or you really wanted to get, want to get into being healthy, you know what I'm saying? I, I'd say do watch a million different people if you want any influence at all. But if you don't want any influence, go to the gym. Go to the gym, watch your calories. Not watch your calories, but just like, you know, eat consciously. Like, you know, it's, there's, it's not a secret as of to what you should and shouldn't eat. Like we all know what's good for you for the most part, what's bad for you for the most part. Eat what makes you feel better. Work out within your, within, you know, what your body can handle, what you can handle. You know what I'm saying? If you really wanna know, like, I don't know, there are doctors, but I also don't know how many of them you can trust either. But like, just don't, don't let like, you know, a five second TikTok video that says, oh, if you're not eating eggs, you can't gain muscle influence you. Cause that's just, it's just stupid. It's just stupid. Uh, next topic, also about food. Kind of weird. I don't know how I ended on that. How to stop eating junk food. Stop buying it. Stop buying it. I don't think it's just magically showing up in your house pleading, eat me, eat me, eat me. Um, you know, and I understand it's a genuine problem. I'm not trying to like downgrade people who uh, are genuinely trying to stop eating junk food and who are genuinely trying to lose weight. Like, I'm not trying to be rude about it. Uh, I just thought it would be funny to say how to stop eating junk food. Stop buying it. Nobody's forcing you to buy junk food. And if somebody's putting junk food in your house for themselves, uh, you know, and you don't want to eat the junk food, I can understand how that would be a problem. Uh, get healthier snacks because it's not necessarily the junk food that you're addicted to. I'm not saying it's an addiction, but I'm saying like you've created a habit out of eating junk food if you're to this point, right? So if your habit is to have so many snacks throughout the day, change what those snacks are. That will make the habit of eating junk food easier to break because it, it, as with anything, it's, it, it's not easy or good on you in a lot of ways to just quit things cold turkey. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless it's like hard drugs. Um, <laughs> but like, you know, you need to like, 
you need to like wean yourself off of it. So like, say you say you snack five times a day throughout the day. You know, you have one snack between breakfast and lunch, you have two snacks between lunch and dinner, you have two snacks after dinner before bed, okay? Trade three of those snacks out for healthier snacks. Instead of a hostess cake, which I eat those too, like I'm bad for eating junk food at myself, but I also eat enough other stuff too, but this isn't about me. Um, like instead of eating a little Debbie, okay, get a yogurt or get a cheese stick or get fruits. Cause again, those shits taste great. Um, you know what I'm saying? So like replace it with healthier snacks and still eat the same amount of snacks a day, but it'll be a lot easier to quit junk food if you have healthier snacks to eat. Do you know what I'm saying? Or like if you're worried about eating junk food for your meals, start cooking. Force yourself to get up and cook and make a habit out of out of cooking your meals and you'll feel so much better. It'll Not only will it feel more rewarding to eat, eat the food because you cooked it yourself, but at the same time, like you're just gonna, you're gonna get up and gonna get moving and you're gonna feel better and you're gonna, your body's gonna want to eat better food because you're not just sitting there eating on junk food. Is breathing in people's deodorant spray bad? Uh, I would imagine. I don't think you can huff that. I don't think you're supposed to huff anything. People like you, people like you are the reason that we have to get ID'd, okay, to buy whipped cream now, okay? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Also, and the thing of this, I understand the person was trying to ask this question because, like, is it bad to inhale deodorant spray in the gym and stuff or, like, when other people are using it around? Yeah, it's probably not good for you. It's probably not. But at the same time, like, the, just the way you word it is, is it, is breathing in people's deodorant spray bad? Yeah, don't huff it. Don't huff deodorant spray. I think it's that simple. Just don't huff deodorant spray. It shouldn't be that complicated to do that. Why do people on crotch rockets always cut everyone off at red lights? First off, not everyone. Uh, I don't think y'all have ever seen me do that uh, in the amount of time that you guys have seen me and hours that you guys have seen me ride on my bike. So it's not everybody. So don't uh, put all of us in there with it. But also, in some states and some places, it is legal for motorcycles to lane split and go up to the front of the line at a red light. And a, for a lot of reasons, it's safer because people out there in vehicles aren't paying attention forwards to people on motorcycles and they'll just come up in line and see the car in front of the motorcycle and just rear in the fuck out of the motorcyclist who's sitting there in the middle of the lane doing nothing wrong. But like, if you go up to the front of the line and you have other cars behind you to protect you, you can also be the first one off at the... See, those people didn't wave. I don't know what people's problems are with crotch rockets. You know what I'm saying? So just stuff like that. But like, first off, it's not all of us. Second off, some people do do it to be assholes. I can't say that there aren't. There are obviously rude people out there. But it's a lot of... A lot of people do it for that. They do it for a safety thing. Because they don't want someone to come flying up on a red light and rear end them because they only see the big car and don't see that there's a motorcycle between them and the car. Is there any air fresher that smells like Home Depot? Uh, are you okay? First off, a dad had to have asked this. There's no way a dad didn't ask this. I've been to Home Depot a lot. I mostly go to Lowe's more than Home Depot. Not that it really matters. Um, but like, you know, like I do, I, I have been to both. They both don't smell bad. They both, like, I'm imagining, I'm hoping they're talking about the wood section because I think they said something about like, yeah, it's 5 a.m. and I was just wondering or it, wondering or if there is a certain wood type that would act like one. So yeah, they want the wood smell. Um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of ways that you can get air fresheners that smell like wood. I'm pretty sure you don't want one that smells exactly like Home Depot. Um, but I'm just curious now what Home Depot smells like. Like I want to go to a Home Depot and just inhale everywhere and just kind of see what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Just out of curiosity. What it is about Home Depot that you like, do you guys want your cars to smell like Home Depot? Or do you guys want your house to smell like Home Depot? Like, is that smell really that good? I like, I don't know. I also have a really terrible sense of smell too though. So like, I don't really notice smells a lot of places that I go. Like I have like almost no sense of smell. So I also just don't know. Do snakes have tails? Brother, snakes are tails. Snakes are living tails. You ever seen a rattlesnake by the way? Like their whole existence is shaking that little tail of theirs. Oh, but like genuinely, snakes are tails. Snakes are living tails. I don't like, you guys ever seen a cat's tail? The way it moves? A snake is entirely that. Its entire existence is that. There's no body, there's no nothing. It's a tail with a head, okay? It is a giant tail with a head. Snakes are tails. I don't understand what you're talking about. Okay, what in the... Oh, okay. Yeah, nope, okay. We're on the last topic now. So, 
Um, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the wrap-up real quick before I get into this last topic. I hope you all had a great time watching this video. This one was a lot of fun. I really like the r slash no stupid questions uh, Reddit. Uh, it's it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Um, uh, but yeah, anyways, I, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you do, make sure to leave a like. Um, also, uh, the comment this time. Let's have something fun to comment this time. I'm thinking. Give me a minute. I, you think I should have these prepared beforehand, but I never do. Ooh, rainy days or sunny days? What do you guys like better, rainy days or sunny days? Let me know that comment. Um, uh, also, if you've watched this point in the video and you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Also hit the bell, uh, because YouTube doesn't ever push out notifications. And uh, I want you guys to be notified when my videos come out. Because if you subscribe, you obviously enjoy them, and there's more of them coming out all the time. Um, so, that being said, as always, continue to spread the joy. We're going to hop into this last topic, and then I will catch you all again way later in a couple weeks because I'm going to be going on a trip for my birthday. What are the potential long-term social, economical, and cultural implications of widespread adopted and reliance on chat GBT? That was such a formal question, which did not need to be that formal. Basically, what's going to happen if we use chat GBT for everything? Uh, brain rot. Brain rot. Because I don't know a lot about chat GPT, but what I do understand about chat GPT is that it's learning from the internet and that it's learning from things that it can discover on the internet. And that's scary because the internet is filled with nothing but brain rot and just horrible media right now. So if we start trying to rely on ChatGPT to AI make us a bunch of stuff up or put us articles together or answer questions for us, it is going to get it's going to get so bad. I really hope Chat hope ChatGPT does not take off more than a meme. Like I really hope people just are not trying to use that thing seriously because it like it's already ruined. It's already ruined because of the you know media that it uses to learn like it's just it's so bad but i genuinely think that if it if it does end up taking over all media will be false i i i genuinely believe that because it does like it's not gonna fact check you know what i'm saying it's just gonna find holy shit oh i thought that was a giant snake for a second because i saw one of those in the road the other day too but that could also have been very dangerous squirrel oh my gosh these roads are dangerous um yeah no just worldwide brain rot more than we already have if we let an ai control the brain rot more than people it's going to get so bad it's going to get so bad so please just don't use chat gpt outside of a meme ai is a cool tool it's fun i use it for a few slight things when it comes to like editing and stuff like that but i don't i don't just like live off of chat gpt so like please don't do that yourself um anyways that's enough for today i gotta go home i gotta get all this stuff done i got busy stuff to do and then i gotta got a trip to go on so i'll catch y'all in the next video whenever i'm back i hope y'all enjoyed these while i was gone and uh y'all know that's pretty much it peace